Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about certifications. Uh, if, if you're in the IT or cybersecurity space, then you definitely care about these. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about that and some I certifications and probably some certifications in what order you need to get them. And uh, so my name is Carl Carpenter. I'm a consultant for Arrakis Consulting. And this is just a quick high level video of certifications uh, in general. Not going to go into great detail onto, into what they are. I will point out certifications that are valuable, certifications that are required in some cases, and, and so on. So first thing about certifications, uh, in another life I was a college professor where I taught the entire Cisco track and all the Microsoft stuff as well. And I ran a salary survey and I found out that somebody who was certified, who knew what they were doing, was actually more valuable than somebody who had a master's degree. So pretty important. Um, and in some cases, certifications are the only way you can get, um, you know, a job. So <clears throat> as it relates to uh, IT or network engineering or cybersecurity, um, there are some certifications that hold more merit than others. And in relation to some of those certifications that hold more merit, more have more value to them, uh, there are certainly pros and cons to all types of certifications, um, especially in the higher value certifications. So some of the pros of any certification is obviously money. The more you have, the more money you'll make, the more they'll pay you, things like that, um, which is great. Uh, but there, there's also the paper tiger aspect. And th these are people, that I call them paper tigers, meaning that they look like a tiger, but they're not a tiger. Um, so these are people that can have excellent study habits. They can go in, they can study, they can regurgitate the, the book exactly the way it was presented to them. Go take the test and pass it. This actually is not good. Uh, it's, I'm sure the person who did that uh, feels awesome about it, but the reality of it is, is that devalues the certification. And it's one of the situations where a person is in a fake it till you make it mode, which is which is not good. So uh, super important to understand um, your your skill set and what you're supposed to be doing. And you understand exactly what your certification revolves around. So just because somebody's certified, that doesn't really mean that they know what they're doing. Uh, but it is what it is. Now, in my opinion, and again, this is just my opinion, tests that have some sort of hands-on to them uh, like you know the Cisco tests <clears throat> you have to code the the routers or the firewalls or whatever you actually have to code them uh, to do whatever the test requirement is at that for that particular question so you have to demonstrate hands-on experience in my opinion that is a much more valuable test than somebody who can just regurgitate answers uh, some of the penetration testing tests are much more detailed uh, and require a lot of, uh, you know, hands-on, you know, stuff. The OSCP test is, is fairly significant and so on. There's some tests that take 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, uh, and they just give you a scenario and they expect you to, to accomplish the mission. And if you can, you're certified. If you can't, then, then you're not. So just things to think about. So in relation to the, the certifications, regardless of what they are, the more certifications you have, the better off you are. You really want to have as many certifications as possible. And I list some, some certifications out here like uh, ISACA, these, these three, ISC squared, CompTIA. CompTIA has a tremendous amount of certifications. I just listed some of the popular ones. Uh, Cisco, you know, that's that's right there. The foundational Cisco, CCNA, um, things like that. CCIE is the top tier. And of course, you got ISO, and there's so many different certifications relating to uh, ISO that is crazy. And then, you know, of course, Microsoft. Now, in relation to the hands-on certifications in this list that, that I've demonstrated here, um, believe it or not, most of these are actually just regurgitating. Um, the, 
the pen test plus is something where you have to know a little bit. Um, obviously, in relation to anything to, with an operating system, you have to understand uh, the commands. So Linux plus would be a big command line. So you'd have to have a lot of hands-on practice. But all of these Cisco tests, these are all hands-on. They ask you a ton of questions, but there's a lot of hands-on that, that's in there. And now when I took the ISO 27001, it was all essay-based. Yay! Imagine writing essays for four hours with a pencil because that's what they did at that time. Thankfully, some of these are now computer-based and easy to do, but I have not actually written anything with my hand in quite some time. So spending four hours with a pencil, uh, I literally had hand cramps uh, as a part of that. So not necessarily a fun time. All right. Now I get asked a, a lot of questions like in what order should I take certifications? Uh, again, I used to teach um, and and I taught people to, you know, pass. I taught them the material and they would do a take the test and pass and things like that. So I always suggest that we when when you take a test that you take the test in such a order that you don't have to do a whole lot of starting over. So so I, I broke it up into three different areas, foundational, intermediate, and then, and then advanced, of course. So for example, if you've taken past the CCNA test, you should immediately take the Network Plus test from CompTIA because the overlap and the similarity is, is fairly high. If you have any sort of computer background and you understand how, you know, the different port numbers like LPT1 is IRQ7, things like that, then you should go take the A-plus test. And then after you've uh, taken those tests and you have a little bit of experience, and, you know, I'm suggesting that you should go with the pen test and then the security plus test. There's a lot of overlaps there. Now, the, the Microsoft side of things, that's, that's a little bit more involved because there are specific air tests that they want you to take. And you should also understand that some of these are not just one test. So for example, if you take the Microsoft test, you're going to take more than one test to get that certification. And the same thing with the CCNP uh, from Cisco. And then of course, if you've, you know, passed or taken all those tests on the intermediate level, then, you know, get some experience. And then after that, you probably should start looking at some other tests that can help you you know, expand your horizons a little bit, like 27,001 or 32. Uh, CMMC is very popular right now because of the Department of Defense. Uh, CISSP from ISC squared, that's always been popular. Unfortunately, in my opinion, I've met too many paper tigers that have no clue what they're doing, but they're uh, CISSP. Uh, you have CISM, CISA, CDPSE, and then of course the CCIE. Uh, depending on your skill sets, uh, any one of those could actually be a benefit to you as a human being, but also to your to your company. So that's certainly important to understand. Now, back into uh, back into the certifications itself, it's important to understand. Uh, back to the pros of certification, it's important to understand that some contracts will not hire you unless you have specific certifications. So for example, government contracts. If you are working on a government contract, then most likely they're gonna require you to have something from CompTIA, like Security Plus, Network Plus, or Pentest Plus, or whatever, or an or CISSP, <clears throat> or one of the various Cisco uh, certifications. Um, it's just the way it is. They they do this to help ensure that there's not a fake it till you make it situation, you know, involving the government. Um, but so there there is value to uh, making sure you have uh, the certifications. All right, as promised, this is super high level. Uh, we will be going into specific certifications at a later date. Um, if you have specific requests for certifications you'd like to discuss, then please let me know. Uh, in, in my life so far, I've either had or held uh, 44 certifications at any one time. I'm still highly certified. 
uh, in a variety of areas. And, uh, you know, for example, so much that I've taught the, like the, like I said, the Cisco curriculum, the Microsoft curriculum, and I'm, I'm currently a 27,001, 27,032 and CMMC instructor. So all of that uh, does, does add up. And with that, I will uh, leave you to uh, the, give you back the rest of your time and I appreciate you stopping by. Um, and again, if you have any questions about certifications or whatever, feel free to reach out to us at sales at arrakisconsulting.com. And we won't hold it against you if you subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. But And with that, thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And I'll talk to you guys later. See you.